Um, <laughs> That's pretty rad. Howdy, I'm Jason Lewis. You might remember me from such internet videos as how not to lift something off your Jeep or your monkey wrench in you. How close is too close? But today's film is actually a how-to on three upgrades to your Jeep that require minimal tools, this is it right here, and minimal mechanical experience. Now I get these questions online that ask, I don't have a lot of tools, I don't have a lot of space to work on my Jeep, what can I do? So I went to jcwhitney.com and ordered three things that I feel are really high reward items to install on your Jeep. They require absolutely minimal tools. We'll use a Phillips head screwdriver, an Allen wrench, and then a socket. I'm using a 3 8 inch drive socket. So that's it. This tray of goodness is what we're going to install today. So into JC, like I said, I went to jcwhitney.com. I'll put a link in the description to each one of these items. And what we're going to do is a cool little rear seat recline kit. So if you have a four door JK, you'll know that if you have a human being back in the back seat, they, it's just uncomfortable because the seat is so upright. So we're going to install this cool little kit from four wheel drive pros. That is the, it's called the rear seat recline kit for the Jeep JK. And so that's pretty cool. We have this set of grab bars right here. Now this was something I found when we were out on the trail to SEMA. The JC Whitney guys had a Jeep out there that was a pretty badass Jeep equipped out with a bunch of stuff that you can get off of their website, obviously. But these are the things that struck me as a really easy and fun install, but a really practical one. Those handles inside your stock JK with those, that little cloth handle, I just think they're junk, they're in the wrong spot, they're floppy, and I don't know how many times have you bumped your head on those things. Now, these things actually are solid bars. They mount into pre-existing holes, so all we're gonna need to do is use our little Allen wrench to install those and a 13 millimeter socket to get the old bolts out. So this is a really high reward fun one, and then I'm gonna save the coolest one for last. I have some Anzo tail lights for this thing. So that's gonna really freshen up. These are the LED version, black LED version for the back of this thing. So that's kind of one of those really high reward, awesome things to upgrade. And you know what it takes to do that? A Phillips head screwdriver, that's it. So let's get busy. We're gonna start with the hardest install. Um, that's the rear seat recline kit. There's probably gonna be the most um, actual physical uh, involvement in this one since there's just a bunch of bolts we have to remove and according to the instructions there's some Loctite on the stock bolts that could be pretty tricky. So let's get busy on that one and I'll show you why we're doing that one. See this useless handle here? That's going away. But so here's an example. Now normally it's just Pinto that rides in the back of my Jeep but I've been blessed with uh, quite a few trips where I've had actual human beings back here and I never got to sit back here so I didn't really notice until I was you know the JC Whitney guys mentioned it to me and I went this is kind of uncomfortable and boy it really does just keep you this is my driving position with this seat so the human that rides here is just like eating this thing um, and that's why this kit is really kind of brilliant in its simplicity it is literally a series of spacers that we're just going to install underneath the seat and give it a little bit of a recline to it so that's it let's get busy doing that so we'll get started back here in the back there are three bolts there's actually two nuts and a bolt right here that you're just going to loosen okay i'm not going to lie that loctite makes this really tricky let's just loosen that up about a quarter inch to give you room to lift the seats up for the spacers. So I'm going to work on this nut here. Let's see how hard this one's going to be. And okay, the nuts aren't that bad. So if these are too much, if all of these are going to be this difficult, I'll show you a little trick that if you have small tool like this, we can make that work. So, in the meantime, we'll just loosen that. Done. Remember, you're not pulling these off, you're just giving yourself room here. So yeah, the nuts are no big deal. <laughs> oh, all right, this is gonna be one of those days. Lots of nuts to deal with. 
So right now, let's get these four in the front here buzzed off. This is where this could be a lot of work. Let's see. That's not so bad. It's not so easy either. One down. Two off. So now that we have this first base unbolted and tipping up like this, the instructions have this cool little tip of wrapping it with the seat belt and then wrapping the seat belt around the headrest here to keep this from guillotining on you as you go to remove these back bolts here. So let's keep moving. Three down. Uh, uh, uh. Now I'm not sure this is going to actually work in here if I have enough room, but this is what's called a cheater bar. And this is just a piece of copper piping that you could slide over your wrench like this. And then this will give you a ton more leverage over stuff. So this is just a little tip in case you can't do it with this. Just find some sort of thing that you could slide over the end and use a cheater bar. I'm going to see if I can do it without it, but that's just a tip. Four. So now we'll do the same trick here. Seat belt around the seat bottom and a quick wrap around the top, the headrest there. And let's get to these back bolts. Hey, look, battery. I'll bet you that's a dead battery. I'm a camera guy. Batteries everywhere. So you want to take off these three bolts but you want to leave the seatbelt one here. So just don't mess with that. So let's get these three off. Wow, I just gashed myself. Now, since I'm using this silly swivel neck here, I just sprung a leak in my arm on this thing here. Don't do that. So use the breaker bar if you got it. that give you the leverage you need. Jeez. Now to give you an idea of how easy that could go, this is an impact wrench. Watch this. Done. Kind of makes bleeding a little silly right now. But I'm going to do that last one by hand just to show you guys I'm doing it. Taking one for the team. Got our cheater bar. And Let's go. Uh, it's good to have a little bit of room too. That helps. Done. Now for the fun part of actually taking our little spacers here and installing them. So now you can see with your seat unbolted, and the back bolts just loose, you could tilt these up and then these spacers just fit underneath here. And on the back ones here, you use the stock bolts that came out. We'll just get that started. While we're here, we'll just get this spacer in and this bolt started. So now over here, see so you have your little spacers here. That little spacer, I'm just gonna clean that out a little bit. Goes right inside there. And in the back here, you use the original hardware that came out. Don't mind my cut there where I sprung a leak. You'll notice I'll keep that little spacer square to the leg here, and then we'll tighten these down. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten across the bottom of all three here. Mm. 
then it's just a matter of putting these spacers in place and we use the included hardware easy peasy get those started these new bolts go in so much easier because there's no junk on them and likewise we'll get the legs down I'm going to make sure that these bases are square so the legs and the spacers are all squared up on the floor. And that's it. And finally, it's just a matter of tightening the three fasteners behind the seats and this install is done. Hey buddy. So Pinto's the one that actually rides back here the most, but let's check this out. Watch out, girl. Let's share. Well, okay, it's noticeably taller, but that makes sense. We just put spacers there, but it actually worked. It is actually much more comfortable. Just that tiny bit of recline makes a big difference. I don't actually, I haven't moved anything, and the seat just doesn't feel like it's imminently, I'm gonna just face plant right here, and just the small of my back feels better. So. Thumbs up, home run. Ooh, let's see if the seat still reclines. It should. And boom, look at that. Pinto approved. First, first upgrade is Pinto approved. Right, girl? Come on, let's do next. So now this silly thing gets replaced with this grab bar, which will mount right up in here someplace and uh, actually offer a really solid place to grab a hold of to get in in the Jeep. So let's get that mounted in and that entails first getting this 13 millimeter bolt out. This bolt is going to try to fall down this thing but oh we got it look at that. Okay stash that there and then this bolt up here comes out so much much easier here and that's it bolt number two all right so now to install this thing you go i'm going to install the top screw this allen screw or bolt and spacer goes into the top there so i'll just kind of get a quick sight in and they say that's going to be kind of stiff because there's some Loctite still in there from the original threads. And then you use this spacer to go into this hole. And we'll line that up, get a preliminary start on that one. And likewise, you don't want to cross thread these, so be careful, but they do definitely feel very stiff. So this is a six millimeter wrench so we'll get that started i'm going to kind of spread it out tighten the top a little bit and this as you can see is pretty easy you can see that kind of pulls it into place there do a quick tighten up on that top one And that's it. Grab bar one installed. And that's it for the front. We'll do the same thing for the passenger side, but watch this. This is exactly why I did this. See this dumb thing? I, okay, I'm sorry. I, that, that's silly to say that. But this right here, I keep, I always hit my head on it there, and it doesn't really help me get in or like when I have a passenger get in over there. This thing, because it's bad to grab your wheel when you get in. I always want to tend to grab this thing to get in, but now, you have that, and that is rad. Huge. <laughs> to me, this is one of those things I'm going to use every single time I get in, in and out of my Jeep. So this is a huge one. I love it. Let's get the back ones in. Okay. Now, see how this is not ideal for getting in? I don't know about that thing. So to put this side in, we just simply... 
take these two screws, and this is a 10 millimeter. Check out this cool setup. See that? And it gives you this great, really solid mounting point. So let's just get that in there. We grab our five millimeter Allen. Just get that started. Get that hold holding in place. Get our second one started. Now you see why I picked this as one of my easy but super high reward upgrades because this doesn't get much easier as an install. Tighten that down. Tighten that down. And look, see that? This is an actual practical handle to use getting in and out of this thing. And now we get to get rid of this thing. I mean, I'm actually not gonna be sad to see that go. So this is cool. So there you go. We're gonna slap the other two on. Everything looks great so far. I'm really liking this. Again, this seat actually is way more comfortable. Imagine that. And last but not least, the taillight install. Now this is, again, another super simple thing. Two screws, not the outside screws, just these two inside screws. All right, set those there, handy dandy fenders, metal cloak fenders there. And then taillight comes out, push this little guy right here. Gonna have to push it pretty hard and then the plug comes out and that's it. I'm not gonna do that because Maybe I should give these away. Anybody need these? I'm sure somebody with a wrecked Jeep would need that, but for now, that'll go in the shed. Now these Anzo LEDs are pretty sweet looking. Like there's a lot of different brands. Now these are a really reasonably priced LED on the JC Whitney website. So that's why I went for these. Now the only thing you have to do is it has this little resistor. What that does is it creates the resistance for the turn signal. So that way the it doesn't just flash ridiculously. I'm sure you've seen that before. And it comes with a little connector. So what I'll do is we'll just remove the two-way tape. We'll mount that up inside here where I wipe that off. So now that we have the resistor mounted inside there, we'll just go ahead and connect our wires. Okay. And the stock connector goes to that one. Pretty easy. And, oh, I think that we will use this little guy. Got this cool little connector there, this little Christmas tree. Then you just literally, just like that, tail in. The tail end has a few tabs. This side gets the two screws, the stock screws. Doesn't get much more simple. Just make sure that's flush. You don't want to over tighten that. Tighten that. Yeah, buddy. Look at that thing. It's pretty awesome looking. I can't wait to see what these look like lit up. They fit pretty good. They're pretty stoked. Just doing a quick check. Everything feels tight. Let's get the other side on. My little guard dog helping out there. How you doing, Pito? Hey, buddy. Good dog. Now to finish off this group of upgrades with the removal of the stock light. Quickie cleanup, stick the resistor into place, connect the wires, and install the Anzo LED taillight. Simple and fun stuff. Now to check out what these things look like all lit up. Behold, the running lights. Now for some brake light action. And some flashers. I had to get out just to check this junk in action. I approve.
Here's some backup lights to complete the LED display. So there you have it, three Pinto approved upgrades to the Jeep. Couple of hours worth of work, super easy, high reward. This is something I really encourage you to do no matter what skill level. All of these upgrades are really practical and well, they kind of look cool too. Now remember, I put the link to each of these upgrades in the description to the JC Whitney website where I got them from. I'd love to support those guys. I met them out on the trail to SEMA this year. They have a rad Jeep and they're really cool dudes. So go check those out. I highly recommend get out and do a couple of upgrades to your Jeep. It's so much fun. That's what these things are all about. Look, no mechanical skill other than, to be honest, those bolts on the seat install were a little tough. So I recommend you using a little bit heavier artillery than the little wimpy thing that I started with. So I highly encourage you to get out, tinker on your Jeep, do things to it. No matter what skill level you are, there are things to do to it. Have fun and learn. Every single time you do something, you learn something. So that's what's really important. So until next time, enjoy your drive. Me and Pinto are going to go take the Jeep out.